uh, Andy Hopper and uh, I'm head of the computer laboratory at Cambridge University. So my recollection of the Cambridge Ring, which was being built when I was a PhD student and just a rather junior assistant wearing short trousers on that project was in the uh, mid 70s and uh, the leap was from a 64 kilobit per second network to about a 10 megabit per second network. So, uh, you know, quite, uh, quite substantive. The Cambridge Ring was put together at the computer lab. Many, many people participated in that, but uh, the leading lights I might mention, Sir Maurice Wilkes, David Wheeler, Roger Needham, Andy Herbert, many, many others. So, um, it did really open our eyes because that was a big change in speed. So by the time we finished with the, uh, with the network itself, and all the uh, devices that were attached to it, a file server, a printer, of course, processors, a processor bank. Today they call it the cloud, but uh, there we go. Um, you know, it was a marvelous, marvelous, uh, exhilarating thing that showed you new applications, new uses, all kinds of interesting uh, things and it was within the scope of a team of maybe 10, 15 people over a period of time to do such pioneering work at that time. Today it's of course more difficult because the size of the industrial base is so much uh, greater that uh, the way you pick a project is uh, uh, more difficult and uh, uh, it's at a different scale. Um, but uh, 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 we were keen and it became fairly clear that uh, one should do an integrated version, some kind of a chip version. And so uh, a company called Ferranti uh, produced a set of programmable chips. They called them uncommitted logic arrays. They should really be called uncommitted transistor and resistor arrays, where you just put in the last layer of metallization uh, and that gives you the interconnect You've got some fixed places where you've got cross-unders, so you can actually route a connection under uh, another connection going overhead, but there's a little bit of a resistive penalty. Um, and we started playing with those. And uh, this was early work on uh, LSI, large-scale integration. Um, and uh, we didn't always get it right. So I well remember uh, one of those moments, some chips came back and the geometry, five microns, was six microns, was big enough that you could actually physically probe it. So when it wasn't working, you had to probe it. So uh, uh, I remember going to do two things. The first one is to get um, a steady base. So I went to the funeral director on Newmarket Road and I said, just give me the slab, I don't need any words on it, thank you. So I came back with a slab. Um, I don't quite know uh, how the purchase order actually worked, but, uh, but there it was. So I had a steady base, but then I needed a microscope. Uh, so I went to another department uh, and uh, there was a lady there called Alison Smith uh, that had a microscope and also uh, s s some wire which uh, I don't know what they had been doing. They had been probing. This is a biological sciences, plant sciences. Uh, they're checking plants or something. I don't know. But anyway, you could dip with some current through the wire into a beaker of acid, pull it out and get a sharp point of the right thing. So she gave me the microscope and also somehow I, I learned about this uh, probing. So then we came back and we were, you know, slab, microscope, uh, probing away. And you had to be very careful because if you probe too hard, um, you would damage the track and sometimes you wanted to cut it, but you know, this was all very subtle and, and so on. And we only had a few chips, so, so, so you, you, you had to be careful because the turnaround on new chips was lots of money and months of uh, delay. Anyway, we did get some insights and we did make those uh, work. It, uh, it, I can report to you that uh, on a personal note, I ended up marrying that person. So uh, 
<laughs> I'm not sure that's got much to do with anything, but you know, it is an important personal uh, note. She's now Professor Smith, but uh, but there it is. It's the same uh, the same one. And she took her microscope back, and we ended up using electron beams and all kinds of stuff to probe these chips uh, when they became more uh, complex. So life went on and it was clear that uh, faster and better networks are important. So from 10 megs to 100 megs or thereabouts, a gigabit per second or thereabouts, it all uh, seemed obvious to us as engineers. And I don't just mean in the sense we can make the technology work, but we were also designing and developing uh, systems, computer systems, which could take advantage of that. And, uh, uh, and the end user, we were the end users and we liked it. And actually that's not a bad uh, method. An anecdote I can think of then is when Bill Gates came along to Acorn and had a look at the BBC Micro and uh, said, uh, what's that wire sticking out? And we said, that's a network. Uh, Bill, and he said, what's that? Well, I exaggerate slightly, but there's a large grain of truth because in that because we had a, an industrial, a commercial networking system as part of the BBC uh, uh, Micro. I also remember another anecdote which is from the early 90s where we were suggesting to the university system as a whole that higher speed networks were important and long distance, longer distance, not just local area networks at higher speeds were important. And um, I remember a report being commissioned from one of the major consultancies at the time about whether it's worth the investment. Um, and we on the one hand were saying my own uh, work, for example, uh, we were already by then streaming uh, video and audio and using the stuff in many interesting ways that, you know, this is the future. Um, and the report came back, said it's not necessary to uh, have long distance, higher speed networking in the country. And the whole thing was delayed by two or three years until it became so damn obvious that uh, uh, that decision could be reversed. But uh, these were rational people, but so rational, they were too rational, right? And, um, that is a serious failure mode in innovation. The networking systems uh, became wireless after a while. Uh, so uh, we got our books out and started reading about this analog stuff some more and antennas and what that might look like. That took several years. But again, just like with the original wire, twisted pair, coax, fiber, it is, after all, just another medium and you deal with the complexity as uh, best as you can. And we had a variety of networks, uh, both uh, uh, higher speed wireless LANs uh, uh, at frequencies of uh, several gigahertz as the carrier frequency. And we also had um, uh, low power, short distance uh, networks before Bluetooth, um, which in effect provided uh, wireless connectivity for uh, devices, things as they're called uh, these days. Uh, so it's interesting to reflect on all the things that uh, we miss now. Uh, obviously a lot of very good things have happened and lots of uh, technological achievements have found their uh, place and uh, uh, lots of wealth has been created. But I still reflect that, for example, uh, I completely missed Bluetooth because even though we had these uh, low range, low power wireless networks of the Bluetooth style, uh, we weren't, uh, I wasn't savvy enough to uh, realize that uh, uh, other, other companies, industry was going ahead and uh, uh, they ended up standardizing and, and uh, jumping the gun. Even to this day, I say our network was better, but what's that got to do with anything? Actually, a similar story is true uh, with the iPhone. Uh, we prototyped, uh, in effect, an iPhone uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, I still have some slides I sometimes 
dig out to show the design of a terminal. It was actually on an IPAC, which was a little PDA, but the number of pixels across each of the uh, what are now called app representations, we call them snacks, um, is precisely the same. It looks exactly the same. So that's another one that uh, the upside potential uh, uh, wasn't obvious to us. Actually, in that case, it's a little more complex because it was to some extent obvious to us, but we couldn't get enough tow in from industrial entities that were either sponsoring us or paying for the work or whatever uh, to take it seriously enough, but they had at least the opportunity so to do. Um, so all this uh, 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 helter-skelter of uh, networks, chips, and the tools, the CAD tools uh, that go with it, um, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful uh, uh, ride. You've got to be good at catching and spotting luck, luck when it hits you in the face. There is no secret to it all except perhaps that one. Obviously have good people, have good teamwork and so on. But uh, it's very hard to predict winners. But occasionally you see one and you think, that's a good one. Well, love it to death, grab it, run uh, uh, as fast as uh, possible. Uh, and it's not always necessary to be the pioneer at the bleeding edge, a fast follower approach or a, a, a not being put off because you're not being first uh, is uh, uh, very important. Um, and also not restricting uh, your ambition in the se sense of what's the upside here? How big could this get? And I'm guilty because no matter how hard I try, this will conquer the world and do everything. Then when I see it 10 years later, it's done that and even more so. And so part of it is having this ambition and not dismissing that as some vision, something that will be radically different as being completely impossible. It's probably impossible, but don't assume it can never happen because it's just possible it might. And I think that's a very, uh, very important lesson. And into the future, there's something happening right now. There's some towing technology today which will affect everybody on the planet we will change the way we lead our lives for the better. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's, it's there somewhere. And you've got to sit in front of that cave and keep watching if anything comes out. But if you look away, it would have left you, disappeared off, and you've missed it.